Northern Empowerment Association is a development organization that has become a model for other initiatives right across Africa. It is directed by Dr. David Mensa from Northern Ghana. David was born Kwabena, and uh, this is the amazing true story of an African boy's journey of faith. We're going to try and seize it in these next moments. Ben, if we're seizing you, David, literally just in time. You and Brenda head back to Northern Ghana on Monday. That's right. Welcome yeah. back to Canada. Thank you very much. Good thing you came here. You met your wife here and uh, you're, you're leaving at least one daughter here. She lives in Stouffville. That's right, living in Stouffville. Yeah. Now people are wondering, we've got two names happening here. Uh, Kwabana is the name your mother gave you and it has a very significant meaning. Yeah, Kwabana simply means that I was born on Tuesday. <laughs> I have a friend here at Costco whose name is Kwame yeah. from Ghana. That means he was born on Saturday. So does everybody get a name that tells the day they were I'm born? Sure. And this is the Ashanti tribe. They name their children by the days that they were born. So um, there will be a lot of Kwamis in Ghana and a lot of Kwamis in Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where the charm ends because the, your early life mm -hmm. is uh, quite scary. Mm -hmm. What happened? Well, my dad died. I was very young, and um, I was sent to a jungle village called Yara, uh, where his, his brother was. Uh, his name is Yawbwatin. And um, when I got to the village, the man looked so much like my father. Uh, my father's brother, Yawbwatin, he did just look identical. Uh, and, and, and I was comforted, actually, when I saw him. Um, but I didn't know that he had five kids, and he was so poor very poor that he couldn't look after the five kids. So when I came into the family, uh, that is the rule for, for our tribe. When you lose your dad and you're a boy, you go to your uncles. Now for a sixth child with, with him, it was just too much to break his back. So he didn't want me really, mm -hmm. he just didn't want me. But the tribal system was that he had to keep me. So he, he, he just wanted to get rid of me. He used so many devices. Uh, he tried to drown me twice, and um, I just remember uh, even the first day we got there, we were eating, and I got choked a bit, and I tried to get some water, and he hit me so hard that all the food in my mouth and my tummy just came out. Um, I was shocked and was thinking whether my dad has raised us up wrong. You know, I just thought, what? How did, you know, my dad was a kind person, and this guy... And not only that, uh, he, he was a witch doctor. Yeah, well, just... So you have witchcraft in the house. Uh, so, uh, I mean, the abuse, the, the, yeah. the other spirits, yeah. uh, this would all explain it why was, you would end up being a fearsome young yeah, man. It was quite a, quite, a, quite a transition from my dad's place to, to this man, and... Um, I, I had to run away. Finally, when he was looking for ways to drown me, I, I escaped and, and looked for my mom. And, and this was the saddest story, I think, in this. When I found my mom, I thought she was going to, you know, I was lean, you, I could count my own ribs. I, I just, there was just nothing in me left. I was bleeding all over, uh, escaping. And my mother said, you know, Kwabna, I can't have you. I just can't. You have to go back to that man. I mean, that's the rule. And uh, I just stood there and I thought, I mean, I cursed my father, I cursed everything. I just, I walked away from her place there, just a different person. I was just full of bitterness and, and anger. And that is how my street life started. I mean, I kicked every goat, every sheep, every cat that I found on my way and threw stone and everything. Where did you hear the name Yesu? It was, it was there in that uh, place, my mother's place. I left and I walked to a place called Bamboy. And it's Bamboy, I saw this 70 year old man talking 70. about- 70. 70. Talking about Yesu. And uh, he didn't know Yesu himself, but if a missionary friend had talked to somebody that that related the message to him. And this is the beauty of our Lord Jesus, that uh, this man was just speaking about the story he heard. Oh. And it caught me when he said, Jesus is a loving person, Jesus cares. And I just thought, 
I'll find this Yezu and tell him my story, uh -huh. how my uncle was trying to drown me and all that. And then so I told my gang not to stone him. Not to, we, were, we were to stone him. We were going to stone him. I mean, this gentleman. For no reason. For no just reason. Just an old man. No, just, there. yeah, just. Um, and then that's when he said, well, Yezu is God's son. You can see him, but you just, you just believe in him. And I remember saying, you know what, we should have stoned you. I, I thought he was tricking me. They didn't want to show me where Yezu was. I said, we should have stoned you. But uh, he said, no, young man, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I just heard about this Yezu. Um, oh, the Lord is good. The sound of his name signals hope, Matthew says. We're yeah. we just going to have to fast track because uh, you would find yourself this is amazing. You're going to have to read the book. Coming to Canada in 1979 That's with right. $10 in your pocket. Yes. And at midnight, after serious hassles, you mm -hmm. were told to go and find a hotel. That's right. Just cold, alone in the country, 10 bucks in your pocket. What did God do? What did Yesu do for you? Yesu came out. Yesu came, uh, like you said, some people, they read the book, they will see the hurdles that I, I went through in my life. But in this airport here, I mean, even our country, Accra, I've never been to the capital city many times. So coming to Toronto was just a, 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 a difficult thing. I've never been to a city like that. And um, at this odd hour, I was told to, to go. I left the week when uh, the country had a, a coup d'etat. So I, I arrived here with only the ten dollars, and when they told me to go and look for a hotel, first of all, you couldn't I, even take a cab I, with I, ten dollars. Yeah, I didn't know what to do and where to find a hotel. Even the lights, the lights at the airport, scared me, uh, you know. You know, and um, but I prayed. I wept in a washroom. It's the first time you cried out to God, isn't it? I just it? really cried to God. In the airport washroom right the here washroom in Toronto. And just told God I was stranded, that I needed his help. And I pulled my bag, my luggage, and I thought I heard a noise behind me. I looked and there was a, 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 a gentleman uh, leaning against the wall. So I went back to him and said, sir, I really am stranded, I need help. And he said, um, I'm not from this town either, but I'll help you. And that man took my bag. I had brought a straw hat, he gave it to me. And he put, we left the, the airport and there was a bus there, we entered. Oh, the Lord is gracious. That um, man took you by cab, subway first. He took me and to then the subway, cab. yeah. When we, when we were going down the subway, I just thought he was going to kill me because I'd never seen anything like that. And I had been reading a book describing the underground people. <laughs> and, and, and the underground people, I think he related to mafia. And I just thought, oh. This is it. This is it. This guy but he is took kill you me. all the way to OBC, Ontario Bible College, now Tyndale, of course. Yeah. And the last thing he said to you, page 207, I'm reading, be content and be happy and pay attention to the reasons why you have come to this land. That's right. This That's was an angel. Me. Yeah, I believe he was. Because I tried several times to get his name and he won't give me his name. David, I, you, you, you have a doctorate. Uh, you and your wife are assisting local communities in addressing basic human needs yeah. in a sustainable way, mm -hmm. in all kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, you were telling me just before we came to air that every year a team from Canada and the UK, a medical team of 60, yeah. come out to provide assistance. Right. Uh, so much going on there. And uh, I just want to say um, GRID stands for Ghana Rural Integrated Development. Mm -hmm. and NEA is Northern Empowerment Association. Right. This has all come from the life God rescued. That's, I mean, dear Abby would be so blown away. That's <laughs> the amazing, amazing thing about God, that he can pick up a person from the gutter and clean it and, and, and set you off to do, to do work. And I, I, I'm just baffled by, by God's grace but for what he's been able to do. And that thousands, uh, since my wife and I left uh, in 1990, we've started 36 churches. 36. 36 churches. Um, I'm training right now 78 pastors. Uh, we've got, we build clinics, we build schools. We've, there's, just, there's just no end to it. And a lot of widows, over 4,000 widows 
We are growing peanuts and we are supporting them with cottage industry, just um, places where they said we couldn't grow fish. We are the largest fish growers in northern Ghana, tilapia. Um, oh, and good this, fish, too. Yeah. <laughs> so God is great. You have three daughters this side of the Atlantic, yeah. so you will be back. Will you bring some pictures next time? Next time I'll bring pictures. Oh, yeah. And if you want to know more, grid-nea.org to learn more about this amazing ministry. But really, you want to read the story, don't you? Mm. I am so thankful it's at our e-store. Mm. Kwabana, an African boy's journey of faith. You want to see what God can do with a life mm. surrendered to him. Mm.